Hey guys, thanks for watching. Today we're going to be talking about flame sensors. In this case, chances are you're watching this because you're having a problem with your furnace. We're going to be looking at this Armstrong unit here that, for some reason, is lighting the burners and then turning right back off again. It's giving us a code on the board that says ignition failure, and we need to find out why. First things first, you're going to want to make sure you've got the power shut off to your appliance. I want to make sure you don't get electrocuted while you're doing this, so I've got the power turned off already, mainly so you didn't have to listen to my air conditioner running. Go ahead and take the door off the furnace. If you're in a basement like me, chances are it's going to be the top door of the furnace that needs to be removed to expose the burner compartment. In this case, my furnace happens to have the burner compartment on the top. Some furnaces, they're down on the bottom. But you'll be able to see where your gas line runs into and a set of burners inside of here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this cover off right now. That exposes my burner compartment. And that little stick right back there is the flame sensor. It's only got one wire running to it. Right there. See that one wire. Not this one with the two wires and that plug there. That's your igniter. You don't need to mess with that one unless it's not working. We'll talk about that in a different episode. This one right here is the flame sensor. So we're going to go ahead and pull that out. This particular flame sensor happens to be held up with a 5 16 screw. We're going to line that up and get this guy out. You see that drops right down out of there. And that is our flame sensor. It's going to be kind of tough to see on camera here. If you look right at that rod there, you can see those burn marks, almost like scorch marks, on the surface. That's carbon buildup. And that carbon is just a byproduct of combustion. And that carbon builds up on the stick, preventing it from conducting electricity. And that's what we needed to do in order to sense flame signal. It needs to conduct electricity. So we need to clean that carbon off of there. All right, so in my case, I prefer to use a bronze brush to clean the flame sensor. Um, a lot of people swear by a scotch brite pad, green preferably, something a little bit softer. The main thing is we don't want to score the surface of the flame sensor. This rod is meant to be completely smooth, and if we dig grooves into it using a piece of sandpaper or even too harsh of a steel wool, that can eat away at the exterior of it and create little grooves in the metal that'll cause it to get dirtier faster, and you'll find yourself down here doing this two times a winter. So if we can just use something easier on it, like a bronze brush, uh, even a dollar bill I've heard some technicians say. You just scrape that right across the surface like this until you have nice smooth ouch, until you have nice smooth clean metal. Take your time, make sure it's clean. See the difference now it doesn't have that black buildup on it anymore. Now that black buildup is all gone. All right, so now we've got it cleaned. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall this, and then we'll test it and see if now the burner's light. I showed you how to do a fairly simple task there, which was pulling out the flame sensor and cleaning it. But the real question is, how do we know that that got better? How do we know that we did something that mattered? How do we know that that changed anything? So, first of all, the symptoms of this would be that your burners would light and then they would shut right back off. So, we know the igniter's working because the burners are lighting. We know that the gas valve's working because the burners are lighting. But for some reason, after they light, it shuts back off again. Some furnaces will have a readout that say poor flame signal or uh, ignition failure. If this is the case, it's a pretty simple diagnosis because you know that there was not a failure to ignite, you just watched it ignite. So the sensor must be bad, or in this case, dirty. One way that we can check this is by pulling out our trusty meter, set it to microamps DC, and I'll flash a little on the screen what that looks like on your meter and just make sure it's in DC current I'll show you a picture of that symbol as well 
and go ahead and put that somewhere where you can see it. Take one probe, it doesn't have to be a fancy one like this, it can just be a regular old probe. This is a low voltage connection, so holding onto these wires isn't inherently dangerous. There are other high voltage wires in here, so do be careful that you're not messing with the wrong wire before you do this sort of stuff. If you're ever uncomfortable working on a piece of equipment, call a professional. It, it, there's literally nothing that could save you enough money that's worth dying for. I've got my probe hooked up in here and I'll show you guys a picture of what that looks like inside. Um, I'm holding the other wire here and I've got my meter out so I'm going to watch to see what it looks like when the burners light. So our inducer motor started. You should see this igniter start to glow here. The gas valve will open, it'll light the burners, and then we'll test our flame signal. So I've got the clamp on back there. I've got my hand on the other side, the wire connection. We're going to watch this meter. There go our burners. We're getting about 3 microamps. 3 microamps DC. That's exactly what we're looking for on this particular unit. And generally speaking, that's what you're going to find with most units is about 3 to 5 microamps DC. If we were to break this connection, say we had a dirty flame sensor, you'll see it cuts the flame right off. On a smart furnace, it'll tell you uh, flame sense lost or um, ignition failure if it doesn't sense that flame. We simulated that by disconnecting that wire, but the same thing happens with a small layer of carbon on there. That's why it's important to make sure that you keep this device clean. So let's talk for a moment about how flame sensors work. Right here we've got a burner with gas and air flowing into it. That gas and air mixes and gets lit by our hot surface igniter on the other side. Some furnaces have a pilot or a spark igniter, but at any rate, there's going to be flame on the other side of this burner if it's lighting properly. Now our flame sensor is the metal rod that we just cleaned. That's bathed in this flame. What happens is our circuit board sends power, alternating current, down this wire here to the flame rod. That power wants to go somewhere. So now I've got a positive and a negative charge at my flame rod, and that electricity wants to go somewhere, but it can't, it's not touching anything, except for this flame. So it actually travels through the flame to ground because our burners are grounded. Your furnace has a ground wire going back to the electric panel or some sort of a ground wire going to an earth ground like a water line or something to that effect. That charge wants to escape to ground, so it does so through the flame. If the flame's not there, it can't do that. If the flame sensor is dirty, it can't do that. Now you notice I only drew little plus signs on there. That's because it's only sending the current to ground in one direction. So we can measure that by putting our meter in line right here, which is what we just did, and measuring that flame current. In our case, we had 3.0 microamps DC of flame current going through that rod to ground. The rest of that current doesn't go anywhere, so we don't measure that. If that flame's not lit, if the flame sensor's dirty, if this is cut, or if there's no ground, for that to travel to, you got a bad earth ground, then that current can't travel and we'll get a code on our board that says low flame signal, failed ignition, something to that effect. So that's the process that takes place in order to rectify flame signal. Well, this is obviously a new YouTube channel. Uh, this is actually the first video on this YouTube channel. So I wanted to let you guys know what the intentions were for the channel so that you knew what to expect going forward. I want to teach young men and women how to be in the HVAC trade. The information is out there for you guys to learn this trade without having to attend a trade school or college. Trade school and college are great, but if you can't afford to take out student loans to get a degree, but want a career that can pay you 80 to $100,000 a year, this is one of the trades for you. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, hop on down in the comments. Let us know if you wanted to 
expand on the conversation, feel free to do that down there as well. If you have any questions, HVAC related questions, whether it be about flame sensors or just HVAC in general, I would love to answer your questions or maybe even make a future videos on the questions that you ask. All right, and again, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate your time. Hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing. I hope you guys have a great day.